In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Thank you for coming to church this morning at St. Margaret's of the Ice Box. Oh, man. Our, our TV room is like a former um, sunroom in our house, and it just, it's like 45 degrees in there, even with a heater running, and I say it's, it's just amazing that we choose to watch TV in the refrigerator, but sort of feels like this morning. I'm like, that's why we have all these vestments um, that we wear. Um, good morning, good morning. Did you uh, hear in that uh, Old Testament reading, um, familiar with that reading, that call of Samuel, beautiful little story about an old man and a young man and God's voice? Did you notice and hear where, uh, where, where Samuel was sleeping? Did you hear, did you hear that? Just this morning, I walked in, and Weston was already here, and he said to me, um, he said, I woke up on the, on the floor of the cathedral this morning. And I said, do you have a party at the cathedral? What, what do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> now, this is the weekend. This Martin Luther King weekend is the weekend when um, the youth event Mikra is happening at the cathedral. Mikra is that uh, great youth event that takes place over the three days of the weekend. Um, comes from a Jewish word, a, a Hebrew word meaning um, a public reading of scripture, and it's a, a youth event that's focused on the Bible, and over the course of the whole weekend, the Bible's read from cover to cover, and, um, and so Weston slept on the floor of, of the, the, the cathedral, the nave of the cathedral this morning, um, or overnight last night, and I kind of laughed to myself and thought maybe he was doing a bit, because that's where Samuel is sleeping in today's Old Testament reading. We're told that Eli, the kind of senior priest, is in his rooms at the temple, where, you know, you would presume he would be, he would, would, is supposed to be. And then Samuel has fallen asleep, we're told, because the lamps needed to be refilled, right? So he's fallen asleep in the Holy of Holies, right? He's right there. It says he's there next to the Ark of the Covenant, that holiest of relics that carried the, temp, the, the tablets of the commandments, right? And he's sleeping there, and and when Samuel hears that voice that he assumes to be the voice of Eli, at least at the beginning of the, serv- uh, of the, of the reading today, that's where he is, is in that, that holy place. I love this reading. I think that it's a great reading for us to reflect on in the context of having just done a baptism last week. Right? And last, last week we did, we, ba- we did a baptism, an adult baptism. Chris Kirkpatrick was baptized right back there became a member of, uh, of St. Margaret's officially, a member of the body of Christ officially. And so here today we have this Old Testament reading about what we owe to one another as members of the body of Christ. At least that's what I'm thinking about it today as I reflect on it in the context of that, uh, that baptism last week. Eli is sort of a priest who's kind of in trouble. He's been priest for a long time, and he has been told um, that uh, the, the, the priest was kind of a hereditary thing, right? And his sons have been just misbehaving, misappropriating, doing all sorts of things they're not supposed to be doing as, as, as future priests of the temple. And God has been telling him, it's not going to go well for your family. Right? And so Samuel is recruited, and, and we have here this apprentice and mentor kind of relationship between this child and this older man. Samuel has been, you know, is the firstborn of his family, and so has been set aside for service to the temple. Some become priests, some become guards, whatever else. The temple needs these young men to serve. And so this is not an atypical type of relationship, a mentor and an apprentice. And when Samuel is hearing that voice of God, I would think correctly, assumes that the voice of his mentor is calling him. So he goes to him three times. Now, I've been woken up by kids um, in bed before, you know. I think some of you probably have as well, right? And, and Eli is just a consummate professional, right? He says, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep. Right? Two times, and then he says, finally, the third time, realizing that it must be the voice of God, he says, Samuel, it's not me. I can assure you. Please let me sleep. Next time the voice comes, say, speak, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. And... That's when Samuel first starts to hear God's prophecy. Samuel will become a prophet of God, will become the last prophet of God. 
before the kings are anointed. Samuel will be the one who will anoint Saul to be king, right? become the first king of, of Israel. But this relationship, Eli and Samuel. Yesterday we had uh, our diocesan ordinations. We ordained four people, three to the priesthood and one to the diaconate. And I was reflecting with the ordinands this last week at our uh, ordination retreat about how part of the way that the church manifests itself is the kind of intergenerational connectedness that we have one to another. And that I have, and that I give thanks all the time for those in my life who served as an Eli to me. Those who, as I was coming up and discerning, you know, about taking on leadership in the diocesan youth program or thinking about things like where I was going to go to college and what I was going to study and and then starting the formal discernment process and um, ending up in this long process toward becoming a priest. There were all of these people in my life who listened when I said, I think I hear the voice of God calling me, or I think I hear something, or I'm thinking something, and people saying, yeah, maybe say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, or some sort of similar thing. Sort of a benefit of being part of the church is having you know, elders in the faith, not necessarily elders chronologically, but elders in the faith, who help us when we feel like, because it happens to us all the time, where we feel like we're not quite certain where the next thing to go, to help us with that big church word discernment, right? Discernment of what we're supposed to be doing. It's one of the great benefits of the church. One of the things that I say when in in formation with uh, people who are about to be baptized, especially parents of young children, is that this is one of the last places where we have, other than our nuclear families, where we have an extended community of intergenerational relationships. It's really a a beautiful thing that we have. And so for all those mentors, I give thanks, and I invite us to reflect and think. Who who else in your life, as you've come to this place, who who was it who helped you learn how to be treasurer or learn how to be senior warden? Or who was it who, who um, in, in, made you interested in um, being part of Link or, or serve um, on the music team or become a, a lay reader? And give thanks for those Eli's in your life. But now that I've been ordained for 12, 12 years, I'm also at a point in my career where I'm getting to see what it's like to be sort of on the other side of that, to be an elder in the faith. You know, I'm, I'm 40 years old now. I'm, I'm quite elder. And I get to see, you know, just in this, in this ordination process, just these, these four people who were ordained today, like I got to have a little bit of a piece of, an, of being an Eli for each one of them coming through the process. I get to be one of Weston's Eli's. I, I get to do that for others as well. And that's a great joy as well. It's a, but it's also a profound responsibility to be willing to be a mentor and to be an Eli for somebody. Because it requires us to open the door to a change and a shift, right? To mentor and to care for those who come up after us requires us to be willing and to acknowledge that the church that I hand on to, to, to Weston is going to be a very different place and that Weston's going to bring different energy into the church. The church that we hand on, we have to say, I have less of a hold on that. And it manifests in this really interesting and almost painful way in the reading today. Did you hear that? That, that when, when once Samuel says, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening— God gives Samuel his first prophecy. His first prophecy. Samuel doesn't get to go from that room and to declare, you know, God loves all of us and we are about to enjoy a beautiful and bountiful harvest. I am the prophet of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Everything's great. No, do you hear what he says? He says, he says to Samuel, God says, go and tell Eli that all those promises that I made to him about what was going to happen to his family, it's all going to happen. And not only is it going to happen, you know, now, it's going to happen forever. His family messed up so bad that they will never be able to offer sufficient sacrifice to make up for these sins that they've committed. Now, if you were a little boy, and God was telling you that you had to go tell this man who's taken care of you, who's fed you, who's loved you, that his family is effectively cursed, and that's your first thing you have to do as a prophet. Man, 
Imagine what that's like. And yet Eli is so wise and mature, holy a man. You know, his sons are terrible, but he's great. He knows. He knows that the work of the prophet is a work that balances the good and the bad, that speaks about the reality of the world, right? And so Samuel, I wonder if there's this moment where, where he's like, I don't want to say what God told me to say, but Eli says, you have to say what God has given you to say. You have been called. Being an, ent- an elder, being a mentor, being one who lifts up the next generation of leaders requires us to give, them, give people permission to do what God is calling them to do. And it might mean that God says something to us that we need to hear through their voice that might be a little painful. So Samuel says, God says, it's, good, it's real. It's going to happen. And Eli receives it grac- graciously and says, you're a prophet. Here you are. You have been called, and this is going to be your lifetime's work. And it's not going to be so easy for Samuel, right? But he's going to do this work because he was given that authority, because he was given that mentorship, that love, that leadership, that permission to speak the hard truth of God. As we move forward from this place, as we think about what we owe to each other in relationship, as the people of St. Margaret's or as Christians just more broadly, we need to be Eli's and Samuel's to one another. We need to take the risk to say, as a Samuel, to one another, I feel like God is calling me to something. I don't know, but I, there's something in my, in my life. I get this urge, this, this thing, you know? Say it to a few people and trust that God will make one of them an Eli for you. And as an Eli, we have to be willing and able to listen, to hear, not just the voice of the young, but the young in ministry, right? Those who are at transition points in their lives, who are wondering about what their next thing is. The next great priest or deacon of this church could be right here, someone who we've known forever, right? The next ministry, the way that St. Margaret's becomes known in the next decade of, of Lawrence, like, it, 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 might, it might not be happening right now, and yet it might be right on the verge because someone is hearing a call and needs to have an Eli, a mentor, a friend say, yeah, you should do that. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. This day, this period of transition, this upcoming annual meeting, this is the time to ask for those relationships, to practice those relationships, to see what the future of St. Margaret's can be because of who we are right here and right now. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Amen.